Let us talk about board games. I'm Devin, your friendly neighbor, board gamer. This is Devin Talks Tabletop, the YouTube channel where the games are made up. What I say doesn't matter, but we are talking about God Tier now. So whether that matters to you or not, listen up. God Tier is a skirmish miniatures game from Steamforge Games. And it is something that, uh, previous to me playing it, I did not really have a lot of expectations going in. I didn't know too much about it. All I knew was it was an, kind of an expandable game. And I mean that in the sense that it is a skirmish game where one player is going up against another player, but they don't just play with one faction each. If you're playing a big tabletop miniatures game like Warhammer 40k or something along those lines, you're playing with one faction and you have a larger army that you're going against. But in... God tier, you have smaller groups, smaller factions that are composed or comprised of one champion and then their follower units. The way that you play, though, is you combine those factions together to where you might have two or three different factions on your side with different champions that are different strategic or stylistic in terms of how they play. You might have ones that are guardians that are very much more focused on gaining and accruing the banners and the points based off of that on objective hexes. Or you might have one that is kind of a brawler that their entire purpose is to knock out the other champions follower units on the other team and whittle down the resources that they have at their disposal or you might have a slayer champion and they are much more bent on attacking other champions and slaying these you know big figures that are leading their troops in the battle or you might have one that is a ooh what's the name of the last one shaper and they're more of like kind of environmental control on the battlefield and all four of these champions function quite differently and even every single one of them that was very interesting how that came across it was like you know just like an error buffering symbol but in my brain every single one of those champions even within those subclasses of champions function differently and have different abilities and their followers are the same and so god tier at its best is this mad combination of these different fighting styles that are fused together into one macro strategy that you have against your opponent. But they're doing the same thing to you. And the entire time you're playing on a board that's got its own particular setup when its own particular organization or configuration of objective hexes. And you play across five rounds. Across five rounds, uh, that build up in terms of the points that they give for each round. One, two, three, two, one. So it goes up on a kind of a nice bell curve. And the medium round or the mid middle round, the third round, um, um, you know, that one is worth three points. So it's worth the most. Um, and then it, each distance away from that third round, from the beginning of the game to the end of the game, uh, staggers down in terms of the amount of points it offers. In that round, though... To get those points, you have to win the push and pull of the momentum. And you do that through knocking out follower units, knocking out champion units, and then also getting banners placed during the plot phase and then remaining there until the end of the clash phase. So you have three phases. You have the plot phase in which all of your units have their actions available on one side of their like unit card. And those allow you to do certain actions that are specific to the plot phase. Some of them might involve attacking, but usually it involves moving around, claiming banners on objective hexes if you're a champion unit. And then for the follower units and the champion units, they usually involve creating buffs for your units, debuffs for the enemy units, and just getting into position for the clash phase. So that's the plot phase. And then you have the clash phase. And the clash phase is set up to where that's the main scuffle. That's the main fight. That's where, you know, the fists come out, the fisticuffs of death, and all of these champions and their follower units fight each other, try to take away the other enemy's banners on objective hexes, and to end up in a better control position. So the marker that signifies who is winning is going to shift every time a player is able to meet one of those scoring objectives. 
And so knock a follower out on another opponent, move up a point. Um, go ahead and knock out a champion, move up four points. Uh, but then they knocked out one of your champions, four points back. And so it's this tug of war for the determination of who wins that round. It's really clever as it scales up. When you play it just at its base game, it's quite simple. And you're like, oh, I have this follower, and these follower units, this champion against that champion and those follower units. And, oh, they do this. And that's going to combine or clash against what they do. And maybe my power is going to win out. Maybe my strategy is going to be more effective. Or maybe I'll implement it more effectively than the player does with theirs. But as you scale up and get two and three factions, not only are you looking at how your strategy with your champion and its followers is affected by or can affect the opponent, you're also looking at how they can synergize, how they can work in tandem with the skill sets of your other champions and your other follower units. This is a game that is quite bulky in terms of the amount of product that you can buy. You can get starter sets, but then each individual faction comes in its own box. So you can get kind of a lot of box bloat with this because the Steamforge is well known for its miniatures. They're known for creating, you know, these memorable, these nice miniatures that are pretty impressive. And this is no different, you know, God tier has these units. Thankfully, one thing that I like about them and one thing that certain games have decided to do and I really appreciate it is when they use miniatures but don't they have them molded in different plastic colors which actually helps signify which faction they belong to or what part of the game they are associated with and I really like that it does it in Forbidden Stars it does it in War of the Ring though not as elegantly um, if you're familiar with War of the Ring so it's color differentiated between those four different types of units. You have those brawlers that go after followers. You have the slayers that go after other champions. You have the shapers, which control environment. And then you have the guardians, which are really intent on getting down banners. All of those units have different colors to them, but they also, when they're not in a starter set, come in separate boxes. So you can very quickly, as you're trying to expand your options of playing, get to the point where you just have a ton of boxes. I think my solution for that is because the pieces are well made, because the miniatures are pretty sturdy, I'm probably going to get some larger baggies and just put a faction in a big baggie with its you know specific cards in there with it. And then when I wanna play, I have those baggies to go along with it. It's not foolproof and I might look into other options because God Tier actually has a pretty supportive and passionate community of fans of people who like it because it's one of those games where you could easily get into like tournament play. It's like a skirmish miniature version of Magic the Gathering or any other type of game that creates this competitive environment because it's got such a core simple conceit to it of how it functions. The genius of the game is actually in the iterative value. It, it, it matters the more that you play, the people you play against, and the certain factions that you bring to the table. Maybe this particular Slayer and this particular Guardian go really well together, but as soon as you bring this Slayer together and get rid of the Guardian and bring in a Shaper, they might play in a completely different harmony together than the other two previous to it. So it's very simple. It, it, there's not a lot of rules that you have to focus on. The mind games and the decision points come down to the individual factions, those champions, their follower units, and then how they interact, both with their other teammates and with their opponents and all of them. Like, does this shaper need to go after and try to close down that brawler? Does this slayer really need to target that one champion to negate the efficacy of what that champion is doing for that player? It's a really cool decision space, and it was a lot of fun. It was, it's a very relaxed game, but it's got a lot of thinking to it in terms of how you might you know, outmaneuver or outsly your opponent in what they're thinking and what they're trying to do. I liked it a lot. I do want to play it some more. I want to, you know, I've played it one-on-one, -on -one and I've played it two-on-two -two in terms of the amount of of units or factions I've had and fielded at the same time. So I've done two on two and you can scale up to like three on three given the size of the board. And I would probably 
be happy to do that because I think that the more you add, the more you have to think about and consider, and the more variables get to clash and play with each other. And I think that's really cool. So God tier first impressions for me, I, I was actually quite impressed. I Again, I didn't go into it knowing anything or thinking anything. I just knew that it was a game from Steamforged. I knew that it had miniatures to it. And when it arrived at my door, I was like, oh my goodness, that's a lot of miniatures. That's a lot of boxes. Though I do think that I have ways to solve the storage of it. And then also, it was, it was just a lot of fun. It was a very relaxed skirmish fighter. And I know that some people like games like Super Fantasy Brawl. I haven't played games like that. Um, but I really did enjoy God Tier, and I could see myself playing it with my son, playing with other people, and just kind of having like a pretty competitive little experience with it over the course of time, and enjoy seeing how I find my favorite factions, my favorite champions, and mixing them together. It was a good time. It was a good time. Have you played God Tier? If so, what do you think of it? Have you not played God Tier? Are you interested in it at all? It's the kind of game where when I did an unboxing for it, my argument was you can only have a few types of games like this. And I still think that that bears true because it, it, it's so much content and you do want more content when you have a game like that because it gives you more options, more exploration, more choices, more discoveries for you as you figure out combinations that maybe you hadn't previously. So you do want more content for it. But the more content you have for it, the the more uh, the bigger of a beast it is, the more space it takes up, the more of a mental imprint it is on your mind when you're looking at your collection. So th there is positives and there's negatives, there's good and there's bad, and I'm kind of curious where you land. I think previous to playing on it, I was almost like I, I'd rather not enjoy this because it would be easier for me to get rid of it. But having enjoyed it as much as I did, I was like, now I'm thinking, how are there ways in which I can condense this to make it more palatable to me from a storage perspective? And also, I want to play again and put some different units together and field them on the board and see how it works. So I, I want to explore more based off of what I've already done. And I think that's cool. I think that's the mark of a, a, a welcome surprise. Sometimes you go in with no expectations and, you know, something happens or, you know, you play a game, you enjoy it or maybe you don't enjoy it, but it, it just, it doesn't leave as much of an impression. And this one, I didn't go in with expectations and it actually left me coming up with reasons and figuring out why I liked it enough to where I can keep it. So God tier, Steamforts Games, had a good time. I enjoyed getting to play with Daniel. Uh, there's a live stream up on his channel, uh, Play the Game HQ, where him and Allison are, and you can check that out, me and him playing if you want to. And if not, maybe I'll do some gameplays in the future. I've been talking a lot. Ah, uh, timestamp. Timestamp.